Okay, so it says, um, we do not, sorry, I got interrupted by a phone call. We do not want to be uninformed brothers and sisters concerning those who are asleep so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again in the same way through, uh, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For we say this to you by a word from the Lord. Okay. By a word from the Lord, not a figment of Paul's imagination. Okay. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Now it talks about the Lord's coming and that there is going to be, I know for many of you, you're going to have to break your traditional uh, thought processes about the Lord's coming. Okay. And we're going to get there, but just go to go with me. When I say the Lord comes at the very end for battle on the white horse, but he comes before that for harvest twice on a cloud. Go with me. We're going to get there. Okay. This is not your traditional teaching. Remember I said at the beginning of the video, I give you a heads up. This is going to challenge what you've been taught. Me too. Okay. So it says we who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the archangel's voice and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive, who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So that means those who have already died in Christ at this particular event will go up first. And then those that are living, it says alive. That means there will be people who are alive. This is important because there is a particular scripture in Revelation, maybe 20, 19, 20. That is the traditional view where people say, see, this is God's coming. This is the resurrection, the first resurrection. That is not the church. Listen to me, guys. That is not the church. Okay. In order to be re resurrected, you have to be dead. But it clearly says these people are alive. Read that particular passage about, about the first resurrection closely. It tells you clear as day that those people were beheaded and that they were not only beheaded, but they went through the tribulation and was beheaded by the Antichrist. And we established in the previous studies that the church is not in the tribulation. So that cannot be the church, guys. This is how you study scripture. If another passage clearly contradicts something else that you believe, then that means what you believe can't be true. Okay? I say that with so much love. I've been there, okay? It's okay. We're learning together. So it says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the, archangel, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. <sighs> Sorry, I had to take a little breather there. <laughs> and so we will always be with the Lord. Okay. He says, therefore, encourage one another with these words. For you who don't believe in a rapture, how do you explain this? What do you, what do you say about this? This is talking about a physical removal of people by four angels. Actually, this context doesn't say four angels, but it says that their people will be removed from the earth and taken to the air where they meet the Lord in the air. What do you call that? You don't have to call it rapture, but what is this phenomenon? People are being moved and removed and taken to the air for what purpose? What do other scriptures say about this particular group, which we know Matthew 24 and Revelation 7, 9? What did it talk about? I don't want to hear about there not being a rapture. Read your Bible and don't jump on these bandwagons of people who are coming up with these, you know, uh, particular teachings that are not founded in scripture. And partly, and we're going to get there, you best believe we're going to get there. The reason why they're coming up with the incorrect understanding is because they are reading the church into passages that are about Israel, especially if they're in the old Testament. You hear me? 
That is, that is where they are falling wrong. And I love, I love every one of you, but I want y'all to get this right. Okay. This is the rapture being described. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here it talks about also about the time, um, um, about the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need any, anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Isn't uh, the, the, the concept of a thief talk, talked about in Matthew? Yes. It will come like a thief in the night. When they say, what do we talk about? The man of sin comes at a time of peace. Didn't we discuss that in one of our studies? Sorry if I'm getting passionate about this, but it says when they say peace and security, then what? Sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains on a pregnant woman. Didn't we say that the man of sin comes in a time of peace that Israel has been promised to, uh, peace, peace, peace. And that's how they're going to get duped by the antichrist. Remember, he says he seduces those, those apostates that he lures in and then sudden destruction against them in the middle of the week, the abomination of desolation. Didn't Jesus tell them in Matthew 24, they're to flee to the mountains. Did we talk about the woman who gave birth to the son in Revelation? How she's nourished in the wilderness for 1,260 days? Wait a minute. Jesus told them to flee to the wilderness and the woman flees to the wilderness for 1,260 days according to Revelation. See how scripture is so harmonious? Don't you just love this? I could just scream from the rooftop. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Goodness gracious right? And it says they will not escape for three and a half years because this sudden destruction is the abomination of desolation. This, this peace and security, this fake sense of peace and security, we said was the first three and a half years of the last week of Daniel, right? With the man of sin signing the peace treating according to Daniel at the beginning of the week, breaking his covenant in the middle of the week with the abomination of desolation, officially revealing him as the man of sin. And in Matthew 24, Jesus says, when you see this sign, this, this, this event as spoken of by the prophet Daniel, run to the hills, run to the wilderness, run to the mountains, because it's going to be a bad time, right? He says like, 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 like it's never been seen before. See how this is so harmonious guys. You can't get any better than this. And this is how you know you're on the right track when you're studying, when all the scriptures are harmonious, no contradiction, okay? If there's something that is contradicting what you believe to be right, then you're probably wrong. That's how you study your Bible, right? And it says they will not escape, but you, brothers and sisters, are not in the dark, for this day to surprise you like a thief. For you are children of the light. Now, remember when in one of our previous studies, we looked, we read through the Apocrypha, right? And it talked about how um, we read uh, in uh, Esdras. Remember, um, I can't remember a chapter, second Esdras chapter two, I want to say. And remember I talked about light, how the um, church is likened to being children of light, lightning like light. And I said, our Bibles talks about it. I said, Enoch talks about it. And we were reading in Ezra how he talked about it. You are children of the light. Okay. You're not in dark, but that also has a physical interpretation as well. Because when you're glorified and given your perfect glorified body, that means your white robe, which we said wasn't actually a white linen outfit, but you're going to be like an angel. And remember when Jesus was, when he resurrected and they said, don't touch me. I haven't gone to heaven yet. Right. And how he, when he stood on the mountaintop and he was transfigured, how he was, was brilliant and splendid like light, whatever substance that he was in that moment, whatever substance that he was before he ascended into heaven, we will be of similar substance, if not the same exact substance. And we will be splendid. Enoch talks about splendid and brilliant and how we will shine. And he calls it lightnings, how the, the righteous will be like lightnings. Okay. This is how it's all so harmonious. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now it says you are children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. 
So then let us not sleep like the rest. That means being lukewarm. Remember, scripture also talks about having your, your lamp lit. Okay. And how, remember some of the, uh, the virgins fell asleep. Remember the church of Laodicea is accused of being lukewarm. That means they're not ready. Remember Jesus was outside the door knocking. Okay. And at the end, that means the door was closed. Remember the church of Philadelphia had the open door. But the church of Laodicea had a closed door with Jesus on the other side knocking. The church of Philadelphia was the one church that was given favorable praise from, from God, from Christ. Remember, the door was open to them and it said no one could shut it. OK, he says he's going to write New Jerusalem on their heads. All right. I'm digressing there. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm going to digress. OK, I'm, I'm going on a rabbit trail there. All right. So it says, um, he says, let us stay awake and be self-controlled for those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled and put on the armor of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation, a helmet of the hope of salvation. The hope of our salvation is what the rapture. That is our escape route. Okay. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Remember in the study we went over about talking about the time of wrath. We're not appointed to the entire time frame of wrath. And we went over the timing of the rapture and how we're taken out before most of it, if not all of it, as far as the parts of the world that most of the church will be in. Remember Trump won. We're gone before that. And we said that kicks off the tribulation for the globe. And the Gentile, mostly Gentile church, church won't be in Jerusalem. We'll be in other parts of the world. Okay. We're not appointed to any of God's wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So that whether we are awake or asleep, meaning whether we are dead in the grave or alive, we may be, uh, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are, are already doing. This is hope, guys. And there is no hope to say that we're going to go through the tribulation and be left on earth when the earth is getting pounded. Okay? Go to Revelation and read those trumps. Go to Revelation and read those bowls. Most won't survive. You hear me? There is another passage that talks about how there will be few survivors. Are you kidding me? And we're supposed to tell people, this is our hope. Be, hope you survive. No, that is not a hope that we want to believe in. Hope that hope that we live. Absolutely not. Hope that we don't get beheaded. Absolutely not. Our hope is the rapture, guys. Call it whatever you want. Call it blue. The phenomenon that's talked about here in Matthew 24, Revelation um, 6 and 7 you ain't got to call it rapture. You can call, the phenomenon is there in scripture. I don't want to hear nothing more about there not being a rapture. That is a false teaching. You hear me? A false teaching from the pits of hell. Okay. Anyway, I digress. Let me calm down. Okay. So now. So first Thessalonians chapter four, this is the church. All right. And let's, let's talk about a few reasons why, why we, we know this. Okay. So it says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Now, when we read in our little notes, we jotted down, right? We talked about this was the sixth seal. And we went to Revelation and Matthew 24, right? Revelation 6 and Matthew 24. And we saw how all of these things are present in both of those passages, right? Jesus was present in Matthew 24. And Jesus was present in Revelation 6, wasn't he? And here it says, the Lord himself will descend, right? And also in Matthew 24 and Revelation 6, it talked about how the skies, the heavens, how they opened, they were shaken and they, the, the, they rolled back like a scroll. The two dimensions, the heavenly dimension and the earthly dimension will be open to one another, right? And, and obviously we know Jesus went to heaven, which is above, and he's going to descend down. 
when every eye will see him and they mourn. Remember? So that means he's going to be descend. He's coming down to the earth. It says here, Jesus descends from heaven. Okay. He comes down. He sa it says here, he has the trump of God. What did we read about? A loud trumpet. Right? A loud trumpet. Matthew 24. And then it says, and we said it's plausible that it could be Trump one. We said that too, right? And then it says here, the dead in Christ will rise along with those who are alive. And then it says, we will caught, be caught up with them in the clouds. What did we read in Matthew 24? Jesus comes on the clouds of heaven. Remember, let's check that one. Right? Right. <clears throat> and then it says, they will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the what? Air. Air. Air isn't wind and air the same thing? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right? And so we will always be with the Lord. Didn't Matthew uh, 24 talk about the elect people being present? Here it says we will be caught. In the clouds with Christ in the air. That's wind. So we've got people present. The elect church. That multitude from Revelation 7, 9. And we will always be with the Lord. Why? Because according to Revelation 7, 9, where do that group, where does that group go? Heaven. Remember? Before the throne. Remember, sorry if you hear kids in the background, those are my babies, right? And it says we're to encourage one another about this. This is why, because heaven is the inheritance of the church, not the earth. We will get to that concept in another study. The earth is the inheritance of Israel, the remnant of Israel, not the church. That is another view you got to undo from your traditional teaching. I know this. Listen. I have the, my, my church teaches, this, teaches similar things. Heaven is for the church, not the earth. A lot of our churches teaches that the heaven comes back. The church comes back down to fight with Jesus. Uh, some people teach the church that they they just linger in the sky and then they come back to the earth. Listen, we got to undo these things. Okay. We're going to hit on all those points. It says in revelation seven, nine, that they are before the temple forever. Forever means forever. You understand? There's no coming back to the earth for the church. We've been glorified. We're in heavenly, we have our heavenly garments now, right? What purpose do we need to come back to the earth for? We don't have any need for water, for sunlight, for food. We'll be like heavenly beings that don't need sustenance, right? <laughs> so it's like, what is the point of being here on earth? There's some more concepts that, that, that I'm going to get into as well about Christ and, and whether he stays on, on earth or not. That's something we're going to, we're going to explore in another, in another video. Okay. There's some things that we're not, we're not catching when we read our scriptures. All right. Okay. So now we've established that Matthew 24, Revelation 6 and 7 is about the church. And not only that, but 1 Thessalonians 4 is the rapture of the church. Okay. All right. Now, um, oh, I wanted to hit one other point. It says also here <clears throat> that the Lord descends with a shout, with an archangel's voice. Now I had to ponder on this one a little bit because I was hoping that some of these other points would be, would be, um, mentioned, especially this idea about the angels. Okay. So we know that in Matthew 24, that the church is collected from the sky by the angels. Okay. Okay. But 
Thessalonians talks about Jesus giving a shout. And I want to say that another either translation or either verse or passage says command, right? Yes, yeah, I have written or command. Is there um, a number? So it has um, F next to the word shout, letter F. Go down to your Bible where it says F and it says or command, right? Now, what is an archangel? What is that? Google it. <laughs> it is a leader of angels, right? Yes, there are seven archangels. Jesus in this particular um, passage is, is, is said to be like an archangel or with an archangel's voice, okay? And he gives a command. Okay, now think about this for a second. If I am a leader of an army, and I'm the captain or the sergeant or the colonel or whatever. I am the leader of soldiers. Okay. If I'm going to give a command, what's the point of me giving a command if there's no one around me to receive the command? Am I just yelling into the air? So if I'm the leader of soldiers as the captain, and I yell a command, could we presume that there are likely angels present, even though it is not spoken of in this particular passage that angels are present? But could we presume and assume that angels are likely present to take this command that's being given and to carry it out? Yes, I think we can. What would be the point of saying that he's given a command as the leader of angels, unless there are angels present in this context that, that it's actually silent about to take the command. But we know that if we're saying, which I'm saying that this is the same event as Matthew 24 and Revelation um, 6 and 7, we know that the angels are present based on those particular passages, right? If, the, if this is the same event being described, right? Now we know in scripture, even in the, even in the, the gospels, how they're all writing about the same event, but how the writers don't have exactly the exact same details. One passage, they might talk about, you know, one piece and then in another pass in, in another gospel, they leave that out. That doesn't mean anything. It just means that one person thought to put it in and the other person didn't, but they're, but they're still talking about the same event that they saw, right? This is similar and it's a similar concept just because it's not explicit that the angels are there. We can glean from the passage that this is the same event as Matthew 24 and Matthew says angels were present, right? And that he was going to send out the angels with a command, right? Yes. Right. With a trumpet, right? Yes. <laughs> So we've got the angels present. We've got a loud trumpet. We've got people present. We've got Jesus present, right? Air, wind present, right? See that? This is the church. Now let's flip to the, um, the rapture. This is the rapture of the church, but let's flip to the other particular passage. The other rapture scripture in Corinthians, which gives us all the debate. And I went back and forth with my husband about this because I'm, I'm about getting it right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans and Corinthians. Okay. Um, Okie dokie. Uh. Okay, 1 Corinthians um, 15, all right, all right, get there, pause the video if you need time. <clears throat> this is the time I would say ignore that, <laughs> this heading. Remember we talked about how these headings aren't quite right? This is one in one of those particular times where... I'm like, mm, that can be misleading there, okay? 
there will be a resurrection, but people assume this is the resurrection of, of Revelation. I think it's 19 or 20 or something like that. Okay, don't mm -mm. ignore that. Okay, so let's start at chapter uh, verse 50. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. It says, what I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor can corruption inherit incorruption. Listen, I am telling you, what it, what is this? A mystery. Let's write this down, the word mystery, okay? Because that's, that's going to be an important point for us. Mystery, okay? So it says, I am telling you a mystery. Listen, okay? We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Listen to this. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we will be changed. For this incorruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility and this mortal body must be clothed with immortality. That's everlasting life, guys. When the, this corruptible body is clothed with incorruptibility and this mortal body is clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where death is your victory? Where death is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. Okay, let's write that down to where it talks about the power of death is the law. Okay, right? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Okay. Now, excuse me, I just dropped my pen. I have to pick it up. So now, in my study trying to figure out the timing of the rapture. Oh, this this particular passage blew me up, right? I was like, wait a minute, babe. You know, because I come from a church that teaches that, that the rapture is pre-trip. Obviously, the last trump, if we're talking about trumpet seven of Revelation, is at the end of <laughs> the tribulation, okay? So how can that, how can we teach the the the, the Rapture is pre-trip. And I remember talking to my husband. I said, babe, I, I don't know if that's right. How can there be a pre-trip rapture when it clearly says right here, last trump? And of course, he, like others um, who teach about this topic, go through these hoops in describing how here, well, this doesn't really mean the seven trumpets. This is a different trumpet, <laughs> right? And listen, I could go with that. If, if you could find me other witnesses, what does that mean? Other scriptures that talk about that will clearly show that it's not the seven trumpets, but some other kind of trumpet, right? And I know that the one um, passage talks about the trumpet of God. Remember, Jesus has the trumpet of God. Um, and they say, see, that's not the, the angels have the trumpet there. That's true. But Jesus is with the angels and he is the archangel giving them the command. Right. So um, I, that's like shaky to me. Right. OK, so I'm like now my mind is like I'm sitting here pondering. I'm praying. I'm asking the Holy Spirit, God, Christ. OK, I, 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 I have no problem if if we got to go through the tribulation as a church. Cool. But I want that to be confirmed by multiple witnesses. OK, because Paul clearly teaches us that this is supposed to be something we're supposed to celebrate about. We're not appointed to wrath. And if we're not appointed to wrath, then what the heck does it mean right here? Because this means we go through the tribulation, which is God's wrath. <laughs> and then you'd have other people teach, well, the whole tribulation isn't wrath, only the bowls. But we, we talked about in the study how the whole time is wrath. Remember, we, we, we went to the Old Testament, we talked about the cup of God's wrath. It's all wrath. Right? So then what could this mean? 
about to blow your mind. And, and some of you already know where I'm going. There is two harvests. Two. And this is where I was when I just said, well, we know there can't be any contradictions in scripture. How is it that people are seeing pre-trib and also post-trib? How could that be possible? And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, what, what if there's two? What if there's two? Could there be two? I got on Google and I just Googled two raptures. And then I just start, proceeded to see, oh, there is a teaching that a lot of people believe of there being two harvests, two raptures. Yes, saints of God, two harvests. And then it just, I said, okay, if that's the truth, then that means there has to be a second group. Okay. There has to be a second group. Okay. So let me go see. So I go, I'm like, I'm thinking in revelation, where will we see another group? And I'm like, okay, so I'm reading revelation. Let's turn to revelation 15, 14 and 15. Okay. All right, let's get there. And I got like 15 minutes left. So we just established that Revelation 7, 9 is a church. Okay, so if there's two, if I'm right and these people are right, there got to be another group. Let's look. So now, then I looked and there was a white cloud. And one like the son of man, that's Jesus, was seated on the cloud with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Write down sickle. That's going to be important later. Okay. Sickle. All right. All right. Another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one who was seated on the throne or seated on the cloud. Sorry. Use your sickle and reap for the time to reap has come since the harvest of the earth is ripe. So the one seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. OK. Boom. Harvest happens. OK. Then it says another angel who was not Jesus, who also had a sharp sickle, came out of the temple in heaven. <clears throat> Yet another angel who had authority over fire came from the altar, and he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle. This is the second one. Use your sharp sickle and gather the cluster of grapes. Let's write that down. Cluster of grapes. Okay, and let's do sickle times two, okay? Because we saw that the son of man had a sickle and that this other angel had a sickle, okay? All right, gather the cluster of grapes from the vineyard of the earth because its grapes have ripened. So this is a different harvest than this one down here, okay? Jesus heart reaps this group. And this other angel reaps this group, okay? And it says that this particular second group that gets reaped, it says the angel swung his sickle at the earth and gathered the grapes from the vineyard of the earth. And he threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. Hmm. We don't know just yet what happened to this group that was reaped by the son of man and with his sickle. But we know that the second person with their sickle reaps the second group and it gets thrown into God's wrath, the wine press. Then the press was trampled outside the city and blood flowed out of the press up to the horse's bridle for about 80 miles. Now, Revelation 15 tells us who this group that got harvested by the son of man, who they are. Let's read. Then I saw another great and awe-inspiring sign in heaven, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for with them God's wrath will be completed. 
<clears throat> I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire. The sea of glass is before God's throne in heaven. And those who had won the victory over the beast and its image and the number of its name were standing on the sea of glass with what? Harps from God. They sang the song of God's servant Moses and the song of the lamb. Okay. Then they go on to sing their song. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. And then it says, after this, I looked and the heavenly temple, the tabernacle of testimony was open out of the temple came seven angels with the seven plagues. These are the bold judgments dressed in pure bright linen and with gold sashes wrapped around their chests. Okay. One of the four living creatures gave this, uh, the seven angels, seven golden bowls filled with wrath, with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Then the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. So we see this group is harvested before the bowl judgment, but after the tribulation. Okay. Now, or let me not say after the tribulation, that's the word word. It's, it's the right word, but the wrong word to use here. I want to say, um, after the seven trumpets is the better way. Okay. All right. Now, remember that we read in first Corinthians, right? It talked about a mystery. Remember we read that? Yes, we did. Turn with me to, um, I think it's Revelation 10. Hold on, let me make sure I got that. Yes, okay. Let's start at verse 1 just for context. Um, Revelation 10, verse 1. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven wrapped in a cloud with the rainbow over his head. We established that the angel with the rainbow over his head is Jesus, right? But here it doesn't say son of man. But it says his face was like the sun, his legs were like pillars of fire, and he held a little scroll opened in his hand. I believe this is Jesus, right? He put his right foot on the sea, his left on the land, and he called out with a loud voice like a roaring lion. This is why I believe this is Jesus, because Jesus is the lion of Judah. When he cried out, the seven thunders raised their voices. Remember I said that a voice, um, God's voice is also likened to um, thunder, remember? Um, and when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up what the seven thunders said and do not write it down. So this particular thing that the seven thunders say, he doesn't write it, okay? Then the angel that I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. He swore by the one who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, there will no longer be a delay. Listen, guys, closely. But in the days when the seventh angel will blow his trumpet, then the mystery of God will be completed as he announced to his servants, the prophets. So although it wasn't written down, it was prophesied. Hmm. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me and said, go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went and the angel, so I went to the angel and asked, him um, to give me the little scroll. He said to me, take it and eat it. I will um, take it and eat it. It will be bitter in your stomach, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. He says, then I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It was as sweet as honey in, the, in, in my mouth. But when I ate it, my stomach became bitter. And they said to me, you must prophesy again. Now let's think about this for a second. And, and maybe I'm being a little too deep here, but he ate it and it was sweet, but it was bitter in his stomach. Bittersweet, bittersweet. When we call something bittersweet, what does that mean? That means it's something that's bad, but it's also good. Catch that again. Something that's bad, but is also good, right? <clears throat> and they said to me, 
you must prophesy again about many people's nations, languages, and kings. You must prophesy again about many people's nations, languages, and kings. Okay. Remember, we said that this mystery was present in 1 Corinthians, right? And we said that there were two harvests and that there were two raptures. And we just established in Revelation 14 and 15 that there was a second group. But I didn't say who the group was. But we know this group isn't the church. How do we know? Because from our previous studies, we learned that the church were given, the church was given palms, P-A-L-M-S, palms. And this group is given not palms, but harps, okay? Both groups are seen in heaven. And both times we established that Jesus is present and that he's on a cloud. Remember, we, we, I, I said I would get to this. I didn't want to get into in our previous study. I said he comes on a cloud for harvest twice, but on a horse for battle once at the very end. Nothing about a battle. Did we read in Revelation 7, 9? Nothing about a battle. And remember, we know also that these aren't the same groups because Revelation 7, 9 talks about how... Um, Angels collected that group. Jesus gave a command and four angels went to the four corners of the earth to collect all the saints, the elect church, right? Nothing about four angels being present here. Nothing, right? And here, the one seated on the cloud who we know to be Jesus has a sickle in his hand and he does the reaping. He swings the sickle, right? And although we, we do know of one other angel being present, one is yelling something and the other one, he's waving the sickle to gather the grapes and he's throwing them into the wine press. Okay. So this, this being thrown at the wine press, price press of God's wrath is bad. It's for judgment. Okay. And don't let nobody else teach you different. It's for judgment. And we're going to establish why in another video. <laughs> okay. This is the second harvest, guys. There are two raptures. Woohoo! <laughs> so I said, thank you, God. The church is still pre-trib. These are tribulation saints. And we know this. Why? Because it says they went through the tribulation period. They won the victory over the beast and its image in order to Win the victory over the beast, you have to be in the tribulation with the beast, right? Nothing about such a thing being said in Revelation 7, 9 about the church. Nope. It says that they won, won the victory over the beast, over his image and the number of his and the number of his name. They were in the tribulation with the beast. To encounter the beast, you got to be in the tribulation with the beast. The church wasn't there, but this group was. Not only that, there's more. Remember, um, as we read in Revelation 10, it said that when this mystery happens, it will be in the seventh trump. When the seventh angel blows his trump, could it be that this group is taken out, harvested in the seventh trump? Let's go and look. Okay, let's turn back with a little bit. And let's go back. <clears throat> okay, this is when the headings are good. <laughs> That's the seventh seal. Second trumpet, third trumpet, fourth trumpet, fifth trumpet, sixth trumpet. The, earth, the, the church of Revela Revelation 7-9 was gone before Trump won. 